This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hey guys, welcome back to Equipment World. You're watching The Dirt, the video podcast that's geared towards bringing you interviews and discussions about new construction equipment and just general happenings in the construction industry. So I'm your new host, Brian Furness, and while you all reel from the fact that I am not Wayne, let me just give you a little bit of background of how I came to be in the industry. So I got my start about 12 years ago in the industry. I started on the residential side, digging basements, doing water sewer taps, finish grades, things along those lines, and then I went over to the heavy civil side where we focused mostly on road construction and airport construction. Uh, I did that for about six or seven years before I moved over into selling equipment and I spent two years selling equipment before I decided to go pursue one of my passions which is running a YouTube channel. So now I have two YouTube channels. Uh, my primary channel is called Diesel and Iron and it is geared towards getting guys into the industry because as we all know the trades are hurting horribly for people. Uh, and then I focus on giving them some fundamental building blocks that they can use on their first day getting on the job. So that's how I came to be. So with all that being said, let's get into today's discussion. We are on with Scott Little from Trimble, and he is here to talk to us about machine control. But Trimble, as most contractors know them, is known as being the GPS company, the, the like heavy duty, expensive machine control company. Today, we're here to talk more about the lighter product offering, which is 2D machine control. We'll get into what that means here in just a minute when we go to our interview here with Scott. Um, but basically, we're talking about systems that don't require a $100,000 investment. It doesn't require you retooling your entire company. It's a very very easy baby step, if you will, into the world of machine control. But before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs? It comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology. It's time to kick some ash. All right, everybody, I'm here with Scott Little from Trimble. Scott, I appreciate you giving us your time today. My pleasure. Thanks for having us on and looking forward to having a chat today. Absolutely. So uh, as we were kind of talking about before, uh, we really want to keep this discussion based around 2D machine control. I do want to go through Trimble's kind of big spread of their lineup, but most contractors that I'm familiar with aren't super familiar with 2D systems. So I guess my first question to you as the expert is what is a 2D system and how does it really differ from a 3D or traditional GPS system? Right. So a 2D machine control system, essentially an infield, so an on machine system that helps control uh, either the bucket tip or the blade tip uh, to a given elevation. Um, so it's all about cutting to grade typically, uh, and that's what it does. So it doesn't give us that horizontal uh, aspect that 3D does, but for many applications, certainly most applications, it's actually, uh, it's all about elevation. So a 2D system provides that. So the way it does it is uh, it either references a physical uh, attribute on the ground. So often say a benchmark, um, or it might be a stake that perhaps the site surveyors put out there um, or any other physical thing that can be referenced um, for an elevation. And that can be either coupled with, or it could be uh, done by itself with laser technology as well. Uh, so that laser provides a plane. Uh, again, it's a reference that the system can work to, uh, to then work from that to have a grade that we work to. So, uh, 
in simple terms, um, it's basically a solution that works to uh, a planar type surface. So either something level um, or perhaps a given consistent slope. And these, while it doesn't give you the horizontal features that a full-blown 3D system does, uh, you are still able to operate in 3D space as far as you can do both a regular forward slope and a cross slope as well, correct? Uh, absolutely, yep. And that's, you know, a lot of the time horizontal doesn't matter. It's an arbitrary position. Uh, a lot of the time, let's say a site survey has been out and already put out the stakes. I guess a good example would be foundations on a house and you're, um, you know, they've given you say a five foot, 10 foot offset, cut eight foot down to grade. Uh, so you can go out, reference that stake that's there. You've got your horizontal line already, so you don't need to know that. It's already there for you and you just dig to grade. Um, so yeah, certainly plenty of options out there. Uh, and to be honest, for most uh, contractors, it's all that they need is a 2D system to get the elevations that they're needing. What are some, and you just kind of touched on one doing basement digs, what are some real world situations in which you would use a, t a, a 2D system and not necessarily need to step up to a 3D system? Uh, we, we could sit here and talk about this for <laughs> All of them. A, a fair while. <laughs> which, which machine do you want to talk about? And which is a, probably a good point. Um, so it's it's not just excavators, it's it's dozers, it's motor graders, it's, we provide them for the compact machines, so attachments on skid steers. Um, but we can go through some examples. So, you know, we just touched on, say, digging foundations with an excavator, uh, but obviously other similar, so maybe, say, putting in a pipe. Um, you give them a slope that you want, you can start in one location, just start digging. So you key in the slope you want, let's say it's a 2%, 3%, 4% fall, um, start on a known place, you start digging um, and you've got that, that fall there. Same for if you're doing a ditch. Um, another example, I guess, would be uh, if we went to say a, a dozer, say you're scratching out a pad or you've got a heap of material that's been brought in, you want to push that out to a flat surface, you just set the elevation, um, go out, bench to whatever uh, reference point you're wanting, you start pushing that material or, or hogging that material out. Um, another common one, let's say motor graders, right? So uh, commonly used on roads, probably the most common, let's say out on county roads somewhere, um, maintaining those. They've given cross slopes, right? Fall so that the water doesn't pull on the road. Uh, you can go out and set your cross slope, let's say it's 2%. Um, you just drive along, you control the height if you need to, um, and it just controls that slope. So very little thought needs to go into it from the operator. The machine just takes care of it, um, regardless of how the machine's moving, that blade stays where it's meant to be that's and maintains that cross slope. slope. Yeah. Interesting. But then, so that's an, actually an aspect of this that I hadn't even thought about. I am traditionally as an operator, I'm familiar with 2D being really on excavators, but I didn't even think about the possibility of graders and dozers and... No, absolutely. So you think about it, there's no actual horizontal aspect to it, right? So that's, it's not a 3D system. Um, it's maintaining that, that vertical that we're after, which in this case is a, a set angle. So the machine's moving, uh, but the blade has the smarts to stay um, at that given slope, right? Interesting. Um, so I guess I can carry on with more examples, but you know, another technology um, in terms of the ups and downs. So typically I said it's a planar surface, right? So working to something level or, or something consistent. Um, but another version of uh, 2D that people don't perhaps think about is using sonic traces. So that's where we have lasers mounted on the machine. So on the blade, either one or dual, um, and goes down to a, a known reference point. So that could be a curb line that's going up and down. It could be a string line, or it could just be matching passes that are already there. Um, but it gives you that ability. You can increment, decrement based on that known uh, reference as well. So you can drive along an existing curb line, uh, cut, you know, grading, say you want it six inches below, whatever it may be, drive along and that blade just does its thing tying into that grade, right? So just to make sure I understand that fully, 
you could take a motor grader yep. without actually dropping a string line. As long as you have your curb, your curbing crew has come in and your yep. job is getting stone to grade. Yep. With that sonic sensor, we'll detect that curb line. You tell it what your offset is and you yep. just drive along and it will hold grade. Go along, you say you want one foot below, we're going to you know, put subgrade to that level materials there or maybe you're wanting to scrape out material um, tie into that existing uh, known reference so in this case a curb um, could be a string line could be whatever to be honest but the laser goes down and just maintains that given offset so you go along up and down with the, the changes in the elevations and that grader it just cuts to what you've tell it to, told it to cut to all right so i'm going to try to throw you for a little bit of a loop here what are the limitations on the system as far as outfitting a machine? Can we take a 1980s road grader and throw a 2D system on it, or are there certain limitations to what machines can have 2D systems? I'd start by saying there's no yes or no answer to this. Okay. Uh, it depends, and it depends what level um, of 2D functionality you're wanting as well. Um, so if it's just a really simple, uh, what we call an indicate system, then perhaps it's possible. So it means we're not tying really into electronics, which, you know, maybe a 1980 dozer doesn't have anyway, sure. hydraulics or anything like that. It's simply um, a correction source that we're mounting. Let's say, let's say it's a dozer, um, for example. In most cases, we've probably got a solution. So you could put, uh, say, a laser on the front of that. And if you've got a laser, you can work to that plane. It's uh, not tying into the system at all. And even if there's slop or play in those linkages, um, which would normally cause issues in machine control. So you lift up the bucket and it doesn't move, but the sensors, you know, um, in this case, it's mounted hard to that, that cutting edge. Um, we can then just go out um, and get a position. So it'll be an indicate. And that means that typically we have light bars um, on the display, or maybe there's external light bars, but it'll, you know, give you a light saying go up or down. You control it, but it's telling you what to do to get that accurate finish that you're needing. So uh, to answer the question, so can't in theory, guarantee that every, <laughs> every machine can, but in many cases, there are solutions out there, um, even for older machines, um, to just help you with what you're doing, get to that grade um, accurately, and you know, just give you that guidance that takes away that guesswork. So I know there's there's going to be a wide variance here depending on, like you just mentioned, whether you're going an indicate-only system or something that's actually controlling the machine. What are some round numbers that a contractor could expect to spend on, you know, outfitting like a midsize excavator or like a D5 dozer or something along those lines? Good question. And again, it's a tough one to answer accurately, um, but I can certainly throw out some loose numbers, um, perhaps for even just getting into uh, machine control. So here at Trimble, we've got an entry level product, which is actually designed for a compact um, track loader, so the compact attachments. So a skid steer with say a, a grader blade or a box blade on the front um, called Earthworks Go. And that's probably the entry level for us. So for you know well under $10,000 um, US dollars currently, you can get a grade control system um, that's dual laser, so it gives you, you know, really high accuracy, high performance um, outputs for grading applications. Uh, and it's really simple and easy to use. And it also actually, you know, leverages your own equipment that you've probably got. So it's BYOD, bring your own device, um, app based, uh, connects to uh, the system through Bluetooth on your phone, um, you just control the angles, the levels uh, that you're needing. So that's probably the entry point um, for us uh, with a, you know, our basic product. Uh, and, you know, for small contractors, for those one-man bands or, you know, the smaller companies, those kind of efficiencies are, you know, significant. But then, so moving up um, to our premium product, the Earthworks line, uh, so it's certainly a range um, and it depends on what level of functionality that you're wanting um, out of your 2D control. So I guess to start with, I've already touched on the Earthworks Go, but certainly on the lower end, it's functionality like say depth and slope on an excavator, for example, where you can bench, control the depth um, and slope, obviously, through to um, you know, the more advanced stuff. And that would be an indicate system. So it's not controlling the machine. It's just 
telling you where you are, what you need to do, giving you a the reference to go up or down. Sure. Um, through to the higher end stuff, um, which you know might be dual laser, so two D system that's dual laser, or maybe a single laser plus cross slope, um, but combined with automatics, right? So the automatics, like, it's incredible. It's it's basically three D. You're just driving it. It does everything else in the up and down. Um, and takes away all that guesswork. It's impressive stuff, but you know we're probably talking mid twenties, um, twenty thousand dollar range US dollars currently for that kind of functionality um, across most of the products or, or machine types. Sorry, so high end stuff across the dozers, the motor graders, um, and excavators is around that point. So just to kind of distill all of that, you could get into. You could potentially, and let me let me just for the viewers say that again. This, these are all very loose numbers. There are a lot of variables at play here, yeah. but very loose numbers. You could get into machine control that is fully automating the machine outside of you needing to steer, yep. and you can do that for under thirty thousand yeah. dollars. So these are, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, these are very affordable systems for for your smaller to mid sized contractors. Definitely, and. You know, it, it's a good amount of money, but we're talking about over the life of the equipment, right? We're talking not weeks, months. We're talking years and years and years of re return. Um, so, yeah, it, it really, when you start looking at it in the bigger picture, um, with what sort of returns you get out of it in terms of how efficient and easy to use it is and all the other things that come with that, it's, it's a very small investment for increased um, return productivity, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that actually plays into my next question where you just went was uh, how does the, and I know from my time in the field, roughly how to quantify production, but I'm sure you guys have studied this in an entirely different way. How do these 2D systems really impact production on the job? <laughs> significantly <laughs> yeah we can probably just stop it right there but yeah, yeah it's significantly improved um you know across so many levels so you, you talk about the accuracy like it, it's it's doing the job right first time right it's quick easy to use it's low um amount of input needed from the operator so they can focus on other things it's um you know significant time savings it's it's on and on and on um so you know, productivity is significantly in, in improved. Um, you start think breaking that down, it's like as you're working, um, you're getting to grade faster, more accurately. So it means there's less work that needs to be done. Um, so time savings there. <clears throat> if you think about the old way that we typically do it is you'd have a grade checker or the operator is getting out of the machine getting that laser, yeah, it's gotta check your grade, own grade. <laughs> right? And we've all been there, done that. So, you know, that time saving, not having to get in and out or not having an entire additional labor unit of a, a grade checker being there, um, you know, no brainer on the labor front. And then, you know, things are quicker. So you're spending a lot less time doing it because you're getting to grade first time done right. So you're saving time in the field, but that means less operating time for the machine right so less expenditure there less fuel sure. on and on maintenance and on. costs everything yeah and then you know another really big one um and certainly it depends on the material you're you're pushing you're using you're digging but there's often significant um savings in material so if you're over excavating that adds up that turns into truckloads right a couple extra truckloads that's pretty yeah, expensive big money yeah so it's just overall, it's not just one thing that has increased, you know, in terms of productivity wise, it's, it's a whole series a of things. A number of factors. Yeah. Sure. Um, that just so, make life easier for everyone, but ultimately it's, it's money, right? Time's money, material yeah. is money. And that segues me right into our, our next topic is, you know, I'm, it, it, it's going to vary case by case, but what would you expect an estimated payback on one of these systems to be? Let's say we went with the top of the end, you know, call it $30,000 system. Really, what are you looking at for a payback on something like that? <laughs> Again, I, I, personally, one, I would but, um, say under can... a year, but, uh, I, you okay. know, I don't. <laughs> that, that's I mean, based on all the things you just went through, you know, so, you know, if you think about having a grade checker, 
that yeah. you're now able to throw in a truck and be productive someplace else yeah. in my mind well within a year you've paid for it but but let me know your thoughts uh yeah so as a company trimble we've done a lot of you know research into this to actually quantify it so we have our own numbers and then we've got plenty of real world stories as well so you know we're not just making it up we've got plenty of customers out there that have given feedback or taken part in independent studies and um you know given us that feedback uh so you know there's a lot that goes into it it depends how much you're using the machine or the attachment um the material the blah 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 right but it's it's surprisingly fast and actually a lot faster than most people would think <laughs> and Brian, you're a, a long way off in terms of time. Um, so yeah, that would be, you know, you're not doing a lot of work and, you know, it's pretty low volume kind of stuff. So it's even faster. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So our, our studies show, um, you know, in many cases, depending on the initial investment, but in around about one to two months, this can pay wow. itself off. But wow. we've got customers out there, real world customers, no true affiliation with Trimble, but saying 150 to 200 hours, they justified wow. that it was paying itself off. So, um, you know, we can give a few examples, right? So let's talk about small machines, skid steers, right? They're used in a lot of um, fine grading applications, say sports fields or arenas, or, you know, you're putting down Astro Turf or, um, you know, say doing building pads where it's, you know, that finished final stuff, but often it's expensive material um, that's having to be brought in. So if you're pushing it, your calculations are right, you're getting grade first time done right, you're not getting trucks coming back in, you're not doing all that extra work, you're, you're there for a fraction of the time. So if you take into consideration those savings, um, it, it adds up really, really quick and pays for itself, right? Uh, another way perhaps to look at it is it depends on the machine or the size of it, right? So um, say for a small dozer, it's probably about the same price to get a grade control system as it is on a large machine. So they say, you know, you're out there with a D6, pushing dirt, pushing material. Um, when you're talking about the volumes that a bigger machine pushes, any amount of, you know, over excavation or, you know, wasted material, that, that adds, adds up. Adds up very quickly. Oh, really quickly, right? Yeah. So that material, that time, that machine usage um it adds up it adds up quick but then you know once it's paid off if it is say one to two months or give or take either side of that it's it's profit it's return after that sure. so it's it's to me it's a no-brainer and to be honest it's it's uh <laughs> it's 2d machine control should be a given for most machine types any contractor out there these days in my opinion um and you know we, we see that in the industry uh, a lot if not most of you know the oems the manufacturers out there they're supplying basic 2d control in most machines these days out of the factory so it speaks volumes to how important it is and how much demand there is and you know how much it's changed the industry but 2d machine control is it's a significant thing it's it's well and truly worth having. So uh, kind of going off of our normal questions here, why do you think 2D machine control isn't as well known as GPS in the industry? Just kind of your personal opinion. I know there's not a formal yeah. stance here. Um, well, it's a good question. It's perhaps people don't even think that 2D machine control is perhaps the thing in terms of, you know, they know that their machine can go out and do a cross slope. Right, but that, that's still a form of machine control. Um, they perhaps haven't really investigated or thought about it. They, you know, a lot of older, um, more established, experienced operators have been out there doing it a long time, and they're really, really good at cutting the grade. Right, they know what they're doing, but often people don't think they need it. Like, what's the point of spending that bit more? Um, but at the same time, so many of these operators that do make that that jump to this machine control, as soon as they do, they, they wonder why they haven't done it in the past, right? Um, but I think these days in particular, as we're coming into more technology and as we've got a newer generation coming through, um, I, I think it's being adopted a lot more. Um, it's certainly getting a lot more popular. Uh, you know, 
kids, people, they're getting trained on these machines and a part of that training is learning how to use this functionality. So, um, you know, as we go on, it's getting more and more popular and, uh, you know, it's, it's something that's here to stay. So now bridging over into your other product line. So you guys obviously are known in the industry as being one of the big GPS players in full 3D machine control. Uh, if I, as a small contractor, want to invest in a 2D system, is there any bridgeability over to the 3D world? Or is it basically going to be now I have to strip the machine back down and put on a 3D system? Great question. Really good question. So that's one of the great things. So, so often 2D for many people is actually the gateway into machine control. Um, often going straight to 3D, it's too expensive. Perhaps it's intimidating. They don't know really what GPS is or how it works. You know, it's something in the sky that you can't physically see. It's just giving you a, a coordinate, go northeast or up or down. Um, whereas this is kind of counter to your previous question, but 2D is a lot more, um, you know, easily understandable. You know, most of these guys have been using lasers most of their life, right? They're getting out, checking grade. They know exactly what laser is. It's just putting that technology onto the machine. So that means you don't need to get out and do it or have someone doing it. So um, pretty straightforward. But to answer the question, regardless of what level of the 2D it is, most of the components that are put onto these machines um, are what we call scalable. So you can go up the ladder, so to speak, from one level to the next, the next to the next. So you may need to add additional, but it's typically almost never ever the case that you need to take that sensor off and change it for a different one or that um, you know display that you've got in the machine is only two day, uh, 2D. Um, all our displays, our sensors, everything, they go across the different levels of that machine control uh, and can be used. So. No, you're not. If you buy a 2D system, um, Trimble system, it's not scrap. It's something that you can build on. So it's scalable to go up and up and up the tree if that's what you're wanting to do, um, to keep building that level of control that you're after um, and move on to that next uh, you know, step in machine guidance. So my next question, I don't want to ruffle any feathers, but uh, you guys are traditionally very tied at the hip with Caterpillar in a lot of ways. Are you guys exclusive to Caterpillar, or if I own a Komatsu or a Case or a Doosan, can I also use Trimble equipment on my machine? Not at all tied to just to Caterpillar. So Trimble sure. obviously does have a, a close working relationship with Caterpillar, but we supply to most uh, OEMs. And if we don't have a specific solution, we often have a generic solution that uh, can work on most machine types um, or models. So in most cases, there's a solution out there, but certainly, no, we don't uh, hold back from any brands, uh, any makes out there. We want to supply the industry. Um, we have a great product. We believe in it, but we certainly don't want to be saying, no, we don't supply to X, Y, or Z. Sure. Um, we make products for the industry, not for specific makes or models. Sure. I think that's actually going to be one of the bigger revolution revelations out of out of this episode for a lot of people because I know me personally I've always thought Trimble and Caterpillar hand in hand so that is really good information to get out there that you guys are readily available to all of the manufacturers yeah and you know we work really hard to try and we constantly have more machines coming out so um, more models that's always being added to continually. Um, so we try and stay as much as we can up to date with the latest technologies and machine makes and models um, and try and have support for those. So definitely um, we're not a one brand show. We um, support the industry and try and get our solutions out there um, across various machine makes, models um, and types of work. So that kind of exhaust my questions I had for you. You had mentioned covering some of the other products as well. Was there anything that you wanted to add, anything new or exciting coming up that, that people should should pay attention to and keep an eye out for? Oh, I can't really say too much about what we got coming. Um, if it was, you know, behind closed doors, it'd maybe be some sure. good conversations, but no. Um, constantly working. If anything, we don't have enough time to get around to everything that we'd love to do, but there's a lot of exciting stuff coming. Um, you know, this industry at the moment is booming and it's, it's, it's across a lot of sectors as well, isn't it? It's not just commercial or construction, there's residential, there's 
it's it's bright at the moment. So it's an exciting time to be in this industry, but certainly bringing the technologies um, that we provide to it and really just simplifying these kind of what seem advanced or perhaps scary things to some people, really simplifying it, breaking down those barriers into machine control um, and just basically improving the workflows for our customers out there. So it, that goes across a lot of different levels, a lot of different, um, you know, products, fields, everything that we're doing. But there's, as I say, a lot of exciting stuff coming. So Awesome. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. So, well, I want to thank you again for taking time to be on the show today. I really appreciate your time, and I hope we can, we can hook up and do this again sometime. Brian, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. Thanks, Scott. All right, so thanks again for Scott and Trimble for volunteering their time to come on the show and discuss these systems. This is where I'm a personal tech nerd. I really enjoy these discussions about machine control. Uh, I hope this has been able to benefit some of you guys who may not have known about 2D machine control. Uh, if you wanna know more, absolutely head over to Trimble's website and do a little more exploring on that. So thank you guys for sticking with me through our first episode as me as the host. We'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Dirt. Thank <laughs> you.